You've probably seen the Northern Lights, those beautiful curtains of green, red, and violet dancing over the poles. But what if I told you those lights are just the visible tip of a massive cosmic circuit? In this video, we're going to look at Birkeland Currents, something you may have heard of, but maybe don't quite yet understand. Don't worry, this video will build a foundation, explain the science in a simple but accurate manner, and leave you with not just a sense of wonder, but an understanding that our planet, our universe, may be connected in ways you have not yet considered. Step by step, we'll explore the electromagnetic behavior of plasma, the formation of filaments, and how these currents may connect Earth to the wider universe. To understand Birkeland currents, we need to start with something fundamental. You got it, plasma. Plasma is often called the fourth state of matter, but like many of you have commented, and I also agree, it should probably be called the first state of matter. But either way, plasma is made of charged particles, free roaming electrons, and positive ions. This happens when a gas becomes so energized that its atoms lose electrons. Now, this may sound exotic, but plasma is actually the most common form of matter in the universe. The sun, the stars, those glowy nebula you see in space photos, all plasma. Even lightning here on Earth, the glow in a neon sign, or the northern lights, plasma is everywhere once you start looking for it. But what really makes plasma special is this. It doesn't just passively float around. It responds to electric and magnetic fields and even creates its own. Plasma can carry currents, generate magnetic fields, and self-organize into structures that stretch across space. It's not just matter. It's dynamic electromagnetic matter. And that's exactly why it plays such a central role in how the universe moves energy. Now that we know what plasma is, the next question is how does it move? And why does it form such strange, beautiful shapes in space? The answer lies in how charged particles respond to electric and magnetic fields. Let's start with electric fields. These are invisible forces that push charges. In an electric field, positively charged ions move one way, and negatively charged electrons move the other. That movement creates an electric current. But when you introduce a magnetic field, something interesting happens. Instead of moving in a straight line, the particles start to spiral. This spiraling motion is caused by the Lorentz force, where magnetic fields curve the path of moving charges. So now instead of just flowing, these particles begin to spiral along magnetic field lines. And here's where it gets powerful. In a plasma, these spiraling paths aren't isolated. The particles influence each other. The more they move, the more they create currents. And those currents create their own magnetic fields, which influence how the plasma moves even more. This feedback loop is what gives plasma its remarkable ability to self-organize, forming filaments, loops, and structures that stretch across space. And when these currents follow magnetic field lines into and out of a planet, we call them field-aligned currents, the very beginning of what we call Birkeland currents. At this point, we know plasma is made of charged particles, and we've seen how they move in spirals along magnetic fields. But to truly understand how plasma forms filaments and transfers energy through space, we need a bigger framework, a bigger word perhaps, and that's where magnetohydrodynamics, or MHD, comes in. MHD is a science that combines fluid dynamics with electromagnetism. It treats plasma as a kind of fluid, but one that can carry current and generate magnetic fields. So imagine a river not a water, but of charged particles. As these particles move, they create magnetic fields, and those magnetic fields push back on the fluid itself, changing its flow. It creates a dynamic feedback loop. 
This feedback is what makes plasma capable of self-organizing into long, thin strands called filaments. Here's how it works. When electric current flows through plasma, it creates a magnetic field that circles around it. That magnetic field pulls inward on the plasma, compressing it. This is called the pinch effect. The stronger the current, the tighter the pinch. Eventually, the plasma contracts into a narrow tube called a filament and acts like a natural electromagnetic wire suspended in space. And once you have these filaments, they can vibrate. These vibrations are known as Alvane waves, named after Hans Alvane, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1970. Alvane waves carry energy along plasma filaments, kind of like how sound travels down a metal rod or how waves move along a guitar string. This is how energy moves through plasma, not by collisions like in air or water, but by these magnetic vibrations along structured currents. It's this process, pinching into filaments, vibrating with energy, that sets the stage for Birkeland currents to form and carry power across vast distances. Now that we understand how plasma forms filaments and carries energy through magnetic fields, it's time to introduce the main character of this story, a Norwegian physicist named Christian Birkeland. He proposed a bold and controversial idea. He believed that electric currents flowed from space down into Earth's upper atmosphere, following the planet's magnetic field lines, a radical notion at a time when space was widely believed to be empty and inert. Birkeland lived from 1867 to 1917, and he wasn't just a scientist. He was an explorer in every sense of the word. His fascination with the aurora borealis led him beyond theory and into action. In 1899, he organized and led an expedition into the Arctic Circle, a perilous journey into sub-zero temperatures and isolation. This first expedition lasted until 1900 and established magnetic observatories across Norway to monitor variations in Earth's magnetic field. This mission was physically brutal. Two team members unfortunately died from exposure, but the data they gathered was groundbreaking. It showed that during auroral activity, magnetic instrument needles changed direction clear evidence of electric currents flowing in the upper atmosphere. Birkeland launched a second, even more ambitious effort in 1902. This time, he created a network of observatories, working synchronously to record geomagnetic data across vast distances. His findings further strengthened the link between solar activity and auroral currents, suggesting a direct electrical connection between the sun and Earth. But at the time, his ideas were dismissed as blasphemy by the scientific mainstream. The consensus held that space was empty. Electricity couldn't flow through a vacuum. Birkeland was even called a madman. As George Bernard Shaw said, all great truths begin as blasphemies. Birkeland died in 1917, never seeing his theories vindicated. But decades later, with the launch of satellites and space missions, scientists finally observed what Birkeland had predicted. Vast electrical currents flowing along magnetic field lines into and out of Earth's polar regions. These are now known as Birkeland currents, named in honor of the man who saw an electric universe long before the instruments existed to prove it. So what exactly are they? Birkeland currents are streams of charged particles, mainly electrons, that flow along magnetic field lines. They come in pairs. One current flows down into the atmosphere, while the other flows back out into space. Because they carry current, they generate magnetic fields, and those magnetic fields interact, twisting around each other into a double helix. This is the same structure that we see in red and blue spirals of plasma diagrams and in telescope images of space. These are not just theoretical. 
instruments in space have measured them directly around Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, and even in solar plasma. They exist on scales from hundreds of kilometers to thousands of light years. In a way, they're nature's version of a power cable, except they float in space, shaped and confined by electromagnetic forces. Okay, time to bring this back down to Earth, literally. Our planet is surrounded by a magnetic bubble called the magnetosphere. It shields us from solar wind, which is a stream of plasma constantly blowing off the sun. But this shield isn't solid. It's dynamic, shaped by electric currents and magnetic fields. And when the solar wind interacts with Earth's magnetosphere, it sets up massive electric potentials. Those potentials drive Birkeland currents, streams of electrons that flow down into Earth's polar regions guided by magnetic field lines. This is how energy from space reaches our upper atmosphere. And when those high-energy electrons crash into gases in our atmosphere, they excite atoms like oxygen and nitrogen. The result? Auroras. The shimmering lights we see in the night sky are the visible result of invisible Birkeland currents. These currents are organized into two major systems, Region 1 and Region 2. Region 1 currents originate in the outer magnetosphere and flow along magnetic field lines into high-latitude regions of the ionosphere on one side of Earth and out on the opposite side. Region 2 currents located slightly closer to the equator connect to the inner magnetosphere and complete the circuit, flowing in the opposite direction to Region 1. Together, these paired currents form a complete circuit. One current goes down into the ionosphere, and the return current flows back out into space. Once in the ionosphere, the incoming Birkeland currents don't just stop. They spread out horizontally, creating two important secondary current systems, Peterson and Hall currents. Peterson currents flow with the electric field and cause heating in the upper atmosphere. Hall currents flow perpendicular to both the electric and magnetic fields helping guide how charges move across the polar skies. This is how Earth becomes part of a living circuit, one that connects the solar wind, Earth's magnetosphere, the ionosphere, and back out again. It's not just a light show. It's an electric feedback system on a planetary scale. So far, we've seen how Birkeland currents carry energy from space into Earth's atmosphere. But what if these same processes extend far beyond our planet? In recent decades, astronomers have observed enormous plasma filaments stretching between galaxies, some as long as hundreds of millions of light years. These filaments are not random. Many show signs of electric currents and magnetic fields. Some even twist and pair up, just like the Birkeland currents we see near Earth. In fact, many cosmic structures, like interstellar filaments, solar plasma loops, and jets that shoot out of black holes exhibit the same basic features, filaments, helical twisting, and aligned magnetic fields. Some scientists believe that Birkeland currents don't just exist on Earth, but that they scale up across the universe. These intergalactic currents could help explain how galaxies exchange energy, how magnetic fields are sustained, and how even the cosmic web, the large-scale structure of the universe, forms and evolves. This idea is part of a broader framework, and it does challenge the view that gravity alone shapes the universe, and instead proposes that electromagnetic forces, especially those carried by plasma, may play a far bigger role than we once thought. If true, it means that the invisible plasma filaments we see flowing into Earth may be part of a much larger cosmic scale circuit, a network of energy exchange connecting stars, galaxies, and perhaps even clusters of galaxies. In that sense, Birkeland currents aren't just part of Earth's system. They may be one of the universe's fundamental tools for moving energy and shaping matter. We started this journey with a question. What are Birkeland currents? 
and the answer led us deep into a world of plasma, like most do, and into the complex ways it interacts with the electric and magnetic fields. We explored how plasma forms filaments, how it carries current through space, and how those currents, called Birkeland currents, link Earth to the sun and beyond. We saw how the same structures and dynamics that shape auroras on Earth may also shape galaxies, interstellar clouds, and the cosmic web itself. Birkeland currents are more than just an atmospheric phenomenon. They're electromagnetic pathways, natural power lines that connect different parts of the universe through invisible yet measurable forces. Understanding them may reshape how we think about space, not as empty and passive, but as active, structured, and electric. From the magnetosphere to the stars, from field line currents to cosmic filaments, it's all part of the same story. The universe may be wired, and Birkeland currents might be the cables. Thank you so much for being part of this journey. And until next time, take care.